The best in poker news, entertainment, and more. This is the Mark Oak Show. Everybody, how are we doing today? We are live here at the World Series of Poker. Uh, looks like it's just going to be me riding the uh, riding the pony today, as the kids like to say. But we are really excited, of course, because it is that time. The main event is here, and players are digging in today, getting ready to play for the World Championship. Should be pretty exciting, hey? <laughs> so we. <laughs> I apologize. I lost it right there. What's up? Look at that thing. There's pandas and monkeys all over the place. We've got all sorts of stuff flying around. Oh, yeah? <laughs> We've got... Uh, Going into the camera there. Oh, there you go. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to see some interesting pictures here. Of course, right on the camera there. There you go. There you go. Nice. That's a win. That's a win. Yep. I know those two guys were hanging out this morning. Very cool. Very cool. I'm sure just got to take it off camera there, but yeah. Yeah, I'm on camera. That's that's all right. Don't worry about it. Welcome to the World Series, everybody. That that's how we do it around here. Uh, but uh, some interesting things happening here. I got a monkey. Can I get a monkey? You got a monkey? I can get a monkey. We'll, we'll put the here. I got a monkey. I, I I promise I will not shock the monkey. I'll bring him back. I'll be right back. All right. So there's my there's my current co-host. Nice. Wow, that's a stack of chips. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So I'm hanging out with a monkey. Amazing how these things go sometimes. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're alive. Uh, but very entertaining, interesting start here to the World Series of Poker. Um, a few interesting things going on that uh, I know a, a couple people have been kind of caught off guard with. And we're going to talk about those in a little bit. But, of course, the first thing that we uh, want to make sure that we do is break down what else is going on because we do have a few events still finishing up and a couple of bracelets uh, given out of course we took the 4th of July off enjoyed a great time by the way at Frank Casella's place and I want to thank Frank for having my family over and uh, really appreciate it. a great party uh, to celebrate the, the independence of our country always enjoying that all right let's uh, go and pull some results in just a second. Got one piece of business to take care of. But, uh, of course, uh, let me, sorry about that. Let's do this. We have uh, event number 62 going on. Actually, let's back that up a little bit uh, before we get into the one drop. Uh, event 60, the one uh, I was fortunate enough to play in, is over. And that one goes to Salman Jani from Pembroke Pines, Florida, as he takes that down, knocks off Brandon Hall out of Littlestown, PA. Uh, but Salman Jotty is your winner, and uh, the monkey. What you we'll oh, we just got a couple things flying around here, so. All right, and uh, so Salman Jotty winning event number 60, uh, knocking, being out 2,563 2, players to take that one down. Uh, big win for Salman Jotty as he wins event number 60. Should have been mine, but that's okay. We'll, we'll let him have this bracelet. I'll get the next one. A uh, wild one in the seven-card stud, uh, event 61, that 10K. And that one goes to a good buddy of our uh, my co-host, Nate Dowland, uh, Matt Grapenthien, 
comes up big and takes that one away from Todd Brunson. Brunson coming in second. Uh, Todd had a two to one chip lead but could not hang on and falls to Matt Grapenthien. Uh James Obst in third. Ben Yu finishing fourth. Steve Landfish in fifth. Phil Helmuth uh, once again cannot quite get there on bracelet number 14. He finishes sixth. Henrik Hecklin in seventh. Henry Ornstein uh, and unbelievable to see Henry Ornstein going that deep. Uh, he is in, finishes eighth and Jesse Martin in ninth. So they're your last nine on that one. But Matt Grapenthien catches a World Series of Poker bracelet. So congratulations to Matt. Way to go. Uh, then the little one for one drop. That one is uh, just getting its next day underway. And we'll pull that one. All right, and event number, but once again, the one drop, uh, event number 62, and the little one for one drop is down to 102 players. That is, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, it's amazing what goes on here sometimes. Uh, Charbel Azi leading the way at 514,000. Alexander Ziskin at 480. Julian Parman at 471. Matt Laposse, 458. Uh, Vitaly Kovyazin is in fifth at 415. Andres Bielskisk, Bielskisk at Skis at 406. Nick Davies 375. Vimy Ha at 371. And Joseph Liberta, the ninth 340. And Maxim Pagnac in 10th. Uh, some of the big names look there. Eric Baldwin. So baseball, he trying to chase down a bracelet here. Uh, he sits in 16th place at 298. And not, there were not a lot of big names here. Uh, Asi Moshi, who, of course, won a bracelet here earlier in this World Series, uh, is in 24th. So he's kind of hanging around there, hanging around in there. Maurice Hawkins uh, in 30th at 236. Uh, Kevin Eister at 38. Brett Schaefer at 39th. And let's see if we got any more big names towards the top of that board. Uh, looking like that's about it. Uh, Tony Cousineau. Uh, cashes again unbelievable uh, as he continues to set the record for most cashes in the World Series without a bracelet so Tony Cuisineau uh, right now on the board there Clarksville Maryland and uh, trying to see if he can make a comeback and finally win a World Series of Poker bracelet but that is the little one for one drop right there uh, event number 63 if we can get to that one for you. Uh, the 10-game mix six-handed event. And that one goes to Bryn Kenny. And another one of those guys who's been a top pro out there grinding for a long time and but not able to win a World Series bracelet. Another drought is over as Bryn Kenny knocks off Jan Suchanek from uh, Nelson, New Zealand. And Bryn Kenny captures his first World Series of Poker bracelet too. So he joins that list of guys uh, like Tyler Patterson, Justin Bonomo, uh, Brandon Shaq Harris, and so many other players who came in here looking for that first bracelet after such a long grind. Uh, George Danzer, another one, and finally bring it home. So Bryn Kenny captures event number 63, the 10-game mix six-handed. Uh, Fabio Coppola in third, Daniel Zach in fourth. Uh, Randy Ole finishing sixth in that one. Uh, but big congratulations to Bryn Kenny as he wins his first World Series of Poker Bracelet in event 63. Uh, we do also have a Pot Limit Omaha tournament going on too, as these are getting ready to wrap up. And another one of the German contingent, Marco Newman at 1.44 million chips leading the way with 23 to go in that 10K Pot Limit Omaha tournament. Isaac Barron, we haven't heard that name for a while. Uh, Isaac Barron at 1.26 is in second. Pat Walsh in third. Javed Abrams in fourth. Mikkel Schlover, Schlover, yeah, Schlover in sixth, fifth, excuse me. David Williams in sixth place right now at 698, so he's got a little chasing to do. And then it's Tom Marchese, Sam Trickett right there as well. Uh, J.C. Tran in 12th, Matt Stout in 13th. Uh, Leif Force is out there, Matt Marifiati. Uh, Alex Kravchenko and Ted Lawson also remaining in this field with 23 left. 
as we get ready to wrap up the Pot Lemon Omaha tournament. I'm uh, not sure if that one's going to get – you would think that would be a pretty good shot to get that one done today, but it's going to be a late night on that one. So the one drop probably not finishing until tomorrow, so those guys, the few guys that are going to be left in that should be coming back to play day 1C if that's going to be their choice here at the World Series. Everything else should be finishing up uh, this afternoon or evening. So uh, pretty pretty cool uh, finish here at the World Series. And uh, one thing we'll, we'll probably do, because I'm sure we're going to have a little bit of time on the show, because with the main event just getting underway, it's uh, going to be you know, a little bit slow. And, of course, this is the slower day of the three, as everybody, of course, who plays today, if they advance, is going to get two days off. So you know, it's one of those events is not really preferred, of course, by, by some players. Uh, but some players really like it because they have the opportunity to come in here and maybe not play against as tough a field, uh, more chances to really capitalize and try and, you know, get through this thing. So, you know, always a debate. Do you play 1A, 1B, or 1C? So that's where that is at the moment. And let's see if we got a... I don't, I don't know if we're going to have a necessarily have a registration number here. Of course, main event guaranteeing a ten million dollar first place prize this year, and uh, no no names on the counts at this point. But uh, we can give you some of the notables, uh, and that's right. And <laughs> I now remember just why Joe is not here. He's playing in the main event. Hello, um, Antonio Payne is in there. Joe Payne, hey, he won a hand. He's up thirty two two. So good for him. Greg Merson. And we're going to talk about a very odd coincidence happening involving Greg Merson. Uh, James McManus is in there, Mark Alito, uh, Oli Shimeon, uh, Trisha, Trishel Canatella, Tom McAvoy playing today, McCool Pahuja, uh, Matt Ashton, Mike Manasso also in there. And hope Mike's doing okay. Mike was at the little gathering we were at last night. He was having some uh, issues with his feet. I uh, hope uh, things are going well for Mike and he's comfortable and able to play this thing well today. Martin Finger in there, Mike Sexton. Johnny Chan makes his first appearance here at the World Series of Poker. So we will see Johnny Chan hanging around here at the WSOP. One guy that's finally hanging around the WSOP is Lance Bradley. He's leaving everybody doing all the work. Of course, the, the editor-in-chief of Bluff Magazine. Uh, let's see, Noah Schwartz in there. Yevgeny Timoshenko is playing today. Blake Bond, Billy Baxter in here as well. Bruno Fatuzzi. Barney Boatman, Jonathan Taylor, Ted Forrest is here. Joe Tehan, Antonio Spondiari has decided to play day 1A. Um, interesting decision uh, for him. Uh, Gabriel Nassif, Andrew Lickenberger, Lucky Chewy is in here, David Vamplu, uh, Susie Isaacs, Mark Etienne McLaughlin trying to get back to the final table that he made last year. Annette Oberstadt is here, Tony Dunst, uh, David Singer in the house, Stephen G who, of course, has an 8th and a 24th the last two years here at the World Series and will try to make one more deep run, see if he can do it again. Phil Locke is here, Darren Elias. Jason Mercier kicking off here on day 1A. Let's see who else we have. Uh, David Chu is in there as well. Um, just running down some names. And that's, uh, I know Jay Farber is also playing today. Jeff Gross is here. So it's interesting that a lot of uh, you know a lot of big names actually playing this first uh, first day one A. You don't see too much of that. Um, I guess uh, you know a lot of players who do like to play day one A, you know, are mostly doing it for the rest. They are looking to try and get those t couple of days off because, of course, you know, for how it works, you have one uh, A, one B, and one C will play today. Uh, we'll play uh, in back-to-back -back days. The players from Flight 1A and 1B that will then come back and play Flight uh, Day 2A, the players from 2C be, or 1C, because it's usually way bigger than the other two, will come back and play on Day 2B. So, to, uh, so the 1C plays on 2B, 1A and 1B play on 2A. Of course, those numbers are huge because a lot of people, you know, waiting to come in on, on see me on 1C because a lot of people coming into town, they don't want to, you know, take the extra time and, you know, have to stay here two more days. So they come in and play that one. And it's usually the biggest day of the tournament uh, in terms of players. But uh, some big names stepping into the board right now and are going to give it a run here to try and capitalize 
on a very interesting day 1A so far. And uh, uh, Phil Collins also here as well. I'm not sure we got to mention him. Uh, but should be pretty exciting. So let me see. Uh, Wookie, let's see. Wookie Way in the chat box. Uh, WPT 500 Aria conflicts with day 1C. And, you know, okay, and that is a good point. Um, that that tournament at the Aria is going to be, you know, maybe forcing some people to go over and play uh, come over and play today. So, uh, yeah, I believe that I believe that is correct. I'll have to look that one up, but yeah, but that is a that is a good point. So, like I said, we are seeing some big names out here today in their quest for the world championship. All right, and uh, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a quick break because I have a feeling we're gonna have a, a little bit of a shorter show this morning. Uh, but we are, of course, but we'll make sure we catch some people on breaks coming out and so and so on. But uh, should be a pretty exciting afternoon here at the World Series of Poker as we are underway for the World Championship. We've got a couple bracelets that should be on the line later this afternoon. So it's going to be a good one. Stick around, everybody. We will be right back. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code Mark Hoke Show when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit blindsquirrelapparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. I'm Dutch Boyd, two-time WSOP bracelet winner, and I want to share my story with you. 12 years as a pro has taught me a lot. For the last year, I've boiled it all down into a tell-all book, 90,000 words. In Poker Tilt, I take you on my journey through all the ups and downs that poker has to offer, all the manic highs and hellish lows of every bad beat and lucky draw. So go to www.pokertilt.com to read more, or just go buy the new book on Amazon or Kindle. Right now, pokertilt.com. I guarantee you'll enjoy the ride. Poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the tables to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's D-E-E-G Poker.com. Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. 
Google.net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with a promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. Want more of the Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, we are back live here at the World Series of Poker. 2014 is main event time. We do have a couple of events finishing up. But we are underway here as, well, one, somebody sitting at one of these tables today be the next world champion. Ryan Reese seems to think so. As he is out banging away on the feature table here at the World Series of Poker. A couple oddities going on here at the WSOP at this point. Number one, uh, the players at the, the amount of players at the table is very interesting. Uh, saw one tweet go out that said they were playing three-handed. Some of them saying four and five-handed right now. So a lot of shorthanded play here early at the World Series, and that's not necessarily the best thing for uh, day one A, considering you know you usually have a lower number of players here. So these guys. Lower number of players plus playing shorthanded. Uh, if that doesn't get changed up soon, this could get a little ugly in there in terms of, uh, you know, how you're playing. I mean, if these guys are having to play five, six-handed, it's going to take a while to, you know, get everybody squared up. So, um, you know, kind of a, an interesting situation there. But I think uh, one thing that everybody's just kind of shaking their heads at right now and makes you, you know, it, like I said, it does, it does make you have a question here or there. The featured table right now uh, here on set is, in the Amazon room, is Ryan Reese, of course, the 2013 champion, the 2012 champion, Greg Merson and Bill Perkins on there. But how in God's name does two main event champions end up on the same featured table here at the World Series right off the bat. I mean, that is a tough one. And obviously now they're playing shorthanded too. I mean, they're going to be beating each other up a little bit. Um, you know, so so kind of odd that those guys end up on the same table. You know, certainly not accusing the rig or anything like that, but uh, definitely a, a strange coincidence that, those, that the past two world champions are playing against each other at this point, right off the bat here at the World Series of Poker, and especially no television. Of course, uh, ESPN's not covering the really covering the event until day four. So two world champs playing on the feature table along with Bill Perkins. That's kind of a, a tough spot for those guys. Boy, you'd, you'd hate to see any of those guys, either of those guys get knocked, you know, get in a hand to get knocked out because they are very aggressive players. So that could, could get a little rough. Uh, on our feature table here at the World Series to start things off. And, and let's see if we got any more updates for you here as well. Uh, 
as we're pulling this up for you real quick. Just give me one second here. And, of course, opening the ceremonies today was Joe Hashem. Of course, it is the 10th anniversary of his victory here at the World Series of Poker. Uh, some of the other big names uh, in the field right now, Diego Cord uh, uh, Cordova's Don Wynn, uh, Larry Wright is here. Uh, in the purple section of Amazon, uh, Brian Yaki, uh, we mentioned some of those other guys, uh, Nick Davella, uh, Phil Locke, Nam Lee has been spotted in there today in the Brasilia room uh, right across from us. Antonio Esfandiari, Salman Be Bebiani, uh, Gabriel Nassif, uh, Maria uh, Mayrink, uh, Susie Isaacs is here playing her first day along with Lucky Chewy and David Vamplu. So uh, those are some of your names early on there. And give us one second. I know uh, James Woods was in the house too. Saw the guys from the PPA taking a little taking a selfie with James Woods. So we'll see if uh, he is in there right now. Uh, some of your other uh, Kevin McPhee is in there. Uh, Manwin, Paul Sokoloff who, of course, uh, came in third in the event here at this World Series. Also in the purple section, Billy Baxter uh, has made is playing today. So we're going to see Billy Baxter. Um, you know, since, interesting, uh, since 2008, uh, he's cashed in just two tournaments, WPT and the $2,500 Raz last year. Uh, Baxter, of course, his first bracelet in 1975 when he won the $1,000 uh, No Limit Deuce to Seven single draw. And of course, uh, seven bracelets for Billy Baxter, but he comes to make another run at it here at the World Series of Poker. Um, let's see. And this is, and now here's an interesting situation. Um, the tournament director, here's an update. Uh, this was about, uh, eh, about an hour ago. Tournament director called to the purple section where two players were playing heads up for the first 15 minutes. Unbelievable. Uh, cards are, are only supposed to be in the air where there are five players at the table. Uh, <laughs> wow. Eric Spencer and his opponent were playing a hand. Spencer turned straight as against his opponent's queens. Uh, they called the tournament director and stopped play at the table since it was three players short. Are you kidding me? Uh, so Spencer uh, got up to 3,700 and then had to wait this out before he could keep playing. So kind of a mistake there by the World Series of Poker staff as uh, players playing heads up in the main event early on here for the first 15 minutes. Can you believe that? Wow, kind of letting that one slide. Uh, some other notables. Uh, Noah Schwartz uh, here is in the orange. Uh, Johnny Chan and John Manette are also here. Uh, they are one of the highlighted tables of the Amazon room. And heard, heard rumor Manette might be headed to the featured table as well. And we'll keep swinging up here. Of course, we already said Mike Mattiso is here. Matt Ashton uh, looks like he will be playing today. And I think, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's an interesting guy. Uh, Tom McAvoy uh, is playing on the same table, apparently, looks like with uh, McCool Pahuja, the WPT Player of the Year, and Trishel Cantonella. So those guys are going to be being out and how about this all-american dave dave swanson is in there playing the main event right now uh, just lost a little hand but uh but very good to see all-american dave playing the main event here uh Ole shimion is in there tom middleton uh picking up some chips and tom makievsky who uh, made a final table in 2011, is in the house as well. Um, and it looks like Antonio Sfondiari and Annette Oberstad have been moved to some featured tables. That's interesting. Uh, some other names in here. Theo Tran has arrived. Uh, Kristen Bicknell, former ladies champion, is in here. Uh, Justin Bonomo is playing. Uh, Max Aldergott, Lee Markholt, Kerry Katz, uh, Corey Zeidman, uh, Kathy Deaver is in the field. Uh, David Benefield, Amanda Musamechi, Randall Flowers, uh, Chris Foxwallis, the 10K Horse Champion, and Michael Gorodinsky have all arrived and are playing here this afternoon. 
All right. So, and Wookie Way, I see you saying, uh, make a note of that. Uh, it may become an issue later. Write the names down. That that definitely should have never happened. Uh, of course, uh, you have to have a minimum. Once again, you have to have a minimum of five players playing on it before play gets underway at a table, and two players playing heads up with with all these open spaces. Boy, that is a that's a tough mistake, and someone's not going to be real happy about that. Wow. So. All right, so that's uh, actually what is happening here at the World Series of Poker right now. Of course, uh, one of my co-hosts, Nick Dowell, working, and the other one, Joe Payne, is one his way into this in a very good league here at the World Series of Poker. And he is out in there right now banging away as he tries to live his dream of winning the World Championship. So we want to wish Joe the best of luck today. Hopefully it gets to day two, and I don't get to see him tomorrow either. All right, and uh, let's get some full chip updates. Give you, you know, and of course, uh, part of the fun of this one is if you're on the board here, you know, get your get your screenshot done and make yourself happy. As you can see yourself on the big board here at the World Series of Poker. And of course, you're coming out. You know, make sure you get your MyStack app out there too, because uh, that MyStack app uh, will give you a chance to report your chip counts in uh, continually throughout the tournament. So anybody that at home can keep an eye on what's happening with you. So that's always a good thing. So if you don't have the MyStack app, uh, would highly recommend you get it. You know, it kind of crapped out on me the other day when I was trying to report that I had uh, you know doubled up a couple of times, but that's the way it goes. Uh, David Chu uh, loses a couple of chips early, but certainly nothing too major there. And, of course, no chip counts posted for the main event either. Hmm, but interesting there that, you know, one thing, and I'll tell you, one thing that we learned, have learned from the last two years of being out here is... You kind of get used to seeing players busting out of these tournaments, and um, there was one gentleman who didn't look happy. But we do have another tournament going on. I believe the I believe the one drop is playing out here at Brasilia, but uh, always one of the toughest things to see because you know as you know as I've done the show here for a little while, I certainly have gotten to see these guys. You know, gotten to know them and, and know how much that means to every poker player that comes into the building and tries to win the world title. And it's one of the worst days of the year for them and as when they bust out of this thing. And, you know, even for the amateurs that you know, saved up the money, managed to get themselves in here, very difficult day to get knocked out. And, I, you know, I know it looks like we did see uh, somebody coming out of here pretty upset. So, All right. So just uh, keeping an eye on things, and you know, hopefully everybody's Kenny Eiger over there. I hope Kenny didn't get at the same table as Joe. <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, Who is it featured table with uh, initials JFC? I do not know, Wookie. Uh, unfortunately, I did see that uh, see that mentioned, and I have no idea who that is. So sorry about that. Can't really be much help on that one. All right, and just uh, like I said, just checking for some updates right now. Yeah, it's, uh, of course, uh, pretty, s you know, this is the, the slower day of the three. As everybody's going to be getting ready to, you know, fired up on uh, day 1C is usually your big one. So that's going to be on Monday, July 7th. And, of course, we'll be crowning our November 9 on July 15th. So we're still a long way to go, obviously, here at the World Series. But, yeah, thank you, Wookie. I appreciate that. But, hey, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to get the Skype open for you. And if you guys are interested in giving us a call and uh, saying hi, we'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, my Skype is MarkHook5150, or you'll be able to give us a call at 702-997-3015. It's 702-997-3015 is that call-in number. Excuse me. And uh, we'll be able to take your calls. If you want to hop in, we'd certainly welcome it. Of course, like I said, I'm down some co-hosts today because of either working or playing. 
But I did hear uh, Marika Edwards is going to be showing up tonight. Of course, so you guys remember her ring girl from the World Series of Fighting, a company that hopped in and uh, joined on joined us here at the World Series of Poker. So uh, we should be having Marika at least with us tonight. That'll be cool. So looking forward to that. And we do have the lines open. So once again, if you want to give us a call, uh, 702-997-3015 is the call-in number. Skype, Mark Hoke 5150 so feel free to join us there. Uh, of course, it uh, might not be a bad time to, let's see, uh, well, Casino Examiner uh, would be great video recording main event bust-out players firing F-bombs. No, it would not. I mean, that might make you happy, but that's that's going to be painful. <laughs> Trust me, it's a very difficult time to see these guys busting out here at the World Series of Poker. Uh, Wookie Way, uh, Ole Shimmy on, his, uh, on a couple of my fantasy teams rooting for him to take down the main event. I yeah, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be shocked. Of course, you just never know what's going to happen here at the main event. We've seen some incredible stories over the years. Um as we've gone through these events, we've seen the major blowups, the, the the amateurs coming through, the you know the top pros like Phil Ivey making uh, making final tables and so on. It's just one of those things where you know it's we're we're just very early in the event, so who knows what's going to happen? But uh, you know you certainly can't win the tournament today, but you can sure as hell lose it. So you know being careful in there, being smart, you know treating those chips like gold, and hopefully we'll. You know, we'll get to see some interesting happenings going on here at the WSOP. I want to thank all of our great sponsors of the show while we have some time. And, of course, uh, I do want to thank the Players Poker Championship Poker Tour. Uh, they had a very successful event over at the Stratosphere and uh, more coming up. Tampa Bay Downs, I believe, the next stop on the schedule. So make sure you check it out at ppcpokertour.com. Get in all the fun and win your chance to go to Aruba. You'll enjoy that very much. So it's ppcpokertour.com. Also, our good friends, Vine Line Comic, nine will become one, one way or another. If you have not downloaded that first issue, I don't know what you're doing. Just go to Final Nine Comic, Final the Number Nine Comic.com, and join in the fun on Final Nine Comic. Our good friends at Run Good Gear, and a 10% off with the code HOKE when you go to RunGoodGear.com. Find your Run Good in our gear today. Get on over there to RunGoodGear.com. Arctic Blue Cooling Towels, ArcticBLU.com. It is not cool to be hot. Uh, one of the more popular items we've seen here at the World Series. Pick up your Arctic Blue Cooling Towel today uh, at ArcticBLU.com. 15% off, plus free shipping with the code Mark Hoke Show. Uh, we want to thank our good friends at SunBuggy Fun Rentals for joining in the fun with us here at the World Series. Go to SunBuggy.com, and you too. And uh, experience the original off-road tour company. Make that dune buggy just fly through the air, but hopefully not into a sand dune. Uh, go to sunbuggy.com here in Las Vegas and all over the Devers, desert southwest. Our good friends, Double Digit Covers. Free winner, 855-489-2700. Just give them a call, and uh, you too can become a, a sports betting legend with the assistance of Tony Dose and his all-star handicapping team. And get a free pick sent to your phone every day by going to DoubleDigitCovers.com. Stop guessing and start winning with the team at DDC. Uh, BlueRail.net, how far do you want to go? The best website, best in website design around, you're going to be thrilled. Uh, Bob Lusk, of course, has been with the team for quite a while here uh, on my shows. And uh, certainly want to thank Bob for all of his great work. Uh, 522-820-5128 is the call Call in number 522-820-5128. Website hosting, multi-site platforms, all sorts of stuff. So make sure you check that out at BlueRail.net. Um, our good friends at Team Poker Joker, 10% off with the code Vegas Hoke. Grin and win with our gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Got some great gear. You're going to love it. Join the cult. Uh, check out TeamPokerJoker.com today. Uh, also, our Nevada Poker League. Hey, if... You bust out of the World Series and you just can't take it anymore. Make sure you, you know, play for free. Relax. Go to NevadaPokerLeague.com. $50,000 in cash and prizes all for free. 
here in Las Vegas. Our The top ladies poker team in the world is the Grindettes. There's no question about it. Go to grindettes.com and say hi to Katie Stone, Katie Dozier, Jen Shahadi, and Jamie Kerstetter at grindettes.com, Facebook, the Grindettes, and Twitter at Grindettes. Uh, off till poker tables, $300 off your next table. Just give them a call at 262-490-3812. That's 262-490-3812. Or visit them at offtillpokertables.com today. Good friends, Global Poker Index, the Poker Ranking Authority. Go to globalpokerindex.com. Find out where do you stand along with all of your favorites in the world. And, of course, regionally ranked as well. So check it out, globalpokerindex.com. And Las Vegas Advisor, of course, Get your great coupons and savings, thousands of dollars of coupons, and, you know, for just about anything you could want, well, just about, uh, go to LasVegasAdvisor.com. Okay. And, yeah, and it was uh, John Monette that was referred to there. So, great. So, John Monette gets thrown on a feature table, too. What are they trying to do? I know it's a featured table, but we're not filming. So this this seems kind of silly to set up a, a table from hell to start things off here at the World Series of Poker. As if, I, if I am correct, that's going to be, you know, that would be Reese, Merson, Bill Perkins, and John Manette. Are you kidding me? And playing shorthanded. That is not a good situation at all. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, also uh, probably should mention our good friends at Deej Sport, Deej Poker. You know, pick up uh, you know some brand new apparel today at DeejPoker.com. Become a degenerate. Well, of course, you already are at DeejPoker.com. Yeah. And of course, Wednesdays we're on KLAV twelve thirty a.m. to talk of Las Vegas, and coming soon to Sports nine twenty the game as well. So make sure you join us on that. <laughs> Wikiways adding Johnny Chan in there too. I don't even want to know what's going on at that feature table. I mean, I, why why would you try to make it harder for your top players to get through this thing? If that I mean, if that's the case, um, Woogie Way saying, tweet out the show again, not enough viewers. I already sneaked another one in there. Sorry, buddy, I'm doing the best that I can. All right, and yeah, really, that's uh, that's all the information we've got so far here at the World Series of Poker main event. We're going to keep an eye on Twitter, and you know, we'll keep looking for you and see what's happening here. But uh, the players, of course, are going to be coming out on their first break here in about 17 minutes. All right, so that's about uh, where it is right now. Let's uh, tell you what we'll. Uh, I'll check and uh, see we can what else we can find out and get ready for the break here. So we want to try to, uh, yeah, just keep it rolling. All right, so let's get a break in and uh, we'll be right back here. Once again, quiet day here at the WSOP. Let's see a couple of bracelets up for grabs and day one A of the main event. Of course, we'll get a little excitement here in the hallways pretty shortly. So stick around, everybody, and we will be right back. RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with a promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. When it comes to custom poker tables, why would you buy something someone else designed and even named for their sales or marketing purposes? The Nighthawk, the Gambler, the Big Slick, the Nuts. Sure, you can customize it if you want, as long as you choose between black, red, or even green cloth, but that's about it. When you choose to play off tilt, it's not just another table, it's your table. The same price gets you a fully custom designed table that reflects your style and game. Off tilt makes it easy to design a truly one-of-a-kind custom poker table that'll give you a home table advantage. 
advantage. Sure, Off Tilt could name their tables for marketing purposes, but why? It's not ours. We don't play on it. And to be honest, there are over a thousand named Off Tilt tables worldwide, including the WSOP, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour, the Jonathan Papelbon, as well as Julie's, Chris's, Scott's, Amber's, Tristan's, just to name a few. So let us add your name to the list and deliver a truly custom-crafted, furniture-quality poker table worthy of your game. Visit www.offtiltpokertables.com or call Brian Knott today at 262-490-3812. We'll show you why Off Tilt is the only way to play. Sports bettors, tired of getting beat every week at your sports book? It's time to stop guessing and start winning. We all know cash is king, and it's time to let the team at Double Digit Covers come to the rescue to help you get the positive cash flow you need to live the life you've always dreamed about. Tony Dose and his all-star sports handicapping team will be in your corner to help you beat the point spread, bring excitement and winning to your betting experience, and build your bankroll to levels you never thought possible. Get free winning sports information at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Stop guessing and start winning today at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Call now for today's free winner. 1-855-489-2700. That's 1-855-489-2700. At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code MarkHokeShow when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. Poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the tables to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's D-E-E-G Poker.com. Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, and we are back here at the World Series of Poker. Wow, quiet day today. A little bit disappointing, but of course, uh, you, know, you don't get the official numbers until about 9 o'clock tonight in terms of registration. I mean, you should see if, uh, you know, people are busting out an aria if they're going to come over here right away. 
or they're going to just take it easy. And, uh, you know, of course, have a lot of players doing that. And let's see. I, I see Wookie was or casino examiner uh, firing away in the chat box, uh, saying saying if only three players are at a table, the other chip stacks or players who shelled out 10k can't be moved. Uh, traffic must be heavy in Vegas with 330,000 in town. Have some players likely stuck in gridlock or hungover. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, I I would lean. I I'll give the hungover. But traffic. Eh. Honestly, you know, the way this city goes, just from my experience so far, is you get the spaghetti bowl and you get the strip. And everything else is really isn't too bad. And it's, you know, it's Saturday, after, you know, Saturday afternoon, too. So uh, I don't I don't know about the traffic situation. I, I kind of think it's it's not that hard to get down here at some point. Plenty of ways around the spaghetti bowl, too, if you really need to do it. But, yeah, so so I will take hung over for 300. <laughs> All right. Uh, once again, hey, we do have the phone lines open if you want to give us a call. 702-997-3015. Uh, 702-997-3015 if you'd like to call into the show. Or uh, hit us on Skype at Mark Hoke 5150 That is your number. So if you guys... Want to participate in the show, and I know it's so early on, so not a whole lot to talk about here uh, at the main event at this point. But we do have a couple other things going on, uh, and apparently uh, it's been announced that Doyle Brunson is not going to play the main event this year. And to be honest with you, I cannot, I cannot blame him. Uh, you know, it was just you know Doyle made it to day five last year, and that was just a really a really tough time. It was pretty obvious uh, he got tired out and just, you know, couldn't hang on to keep pushing and pushing. Uh, just, you know, really had a bad run uh, before he went out. But apparently Doyle Brunson is not going to be playing the main event this year. Uh, let's see. Uh, what we, you know, if we have any other... Uh, Uh, interesting happening so far at the WSOP. Um, and what else is going on? <laughs> I see uh, someone telling Doyle he should play the main. I, I just, I'm not going to, I just think that Doyle, that tournament is just too long. It's, it's just too long for Doyle. Uh, you know, you got to love the guy and you know he wants to play it. But, uh, you know, it's just going it, to, it's too much of a long grind. It really is. I mean, for for somebody uh, his age to to make it through five days it would be just an incredible accomplishment. Not that he couldn't do it, but it's it's pretty rough. Um, I'm just kind of swinging through the other tweets. Uh, Ryan Reese, of course, at Ryan Reese one, saying lost a pot where a guy misclicked pre and ended up with quads. Uh, that's that's a tough one. Um, what else we have? Bear with me for a second, guys. Okay, what is going on here? We'll get rid of that. No, Ryan Laplante on Twitter reporting in that he, you know, is having a pool party and enjoying the day off. Um, Susie Isaacs saying aggressive is an understatement. A raise is an invitation for a re-raise. Mm, let's see anything else here. And, Bill, and and poor Bill Perkins saying pros everywhere, hard to get anything going. Yeah, that that's not going to be an easy easy time for him on that table. So uh, Josh Ari, always some interesting tweets from him uh, as I present to you quote the angry player of the year. Anyone else know or play with this asshole would be his his quote on the on the Twitter. So Josh Ari not exactly enjoying his company here at the World Series of Poker. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is funny. And by the way, Phil Locke, I, I'm not sure what Phil Locke's outfit is today. Uh, it, it's kind of like 
space alien meets Star Trek nerd. I'm not sure, but uh, Phil Locke in a shiny jacket and one of the most massive pair of goggles I've ever seen. So uh, <laughs> check out Phil Locke on Twitter. Uh, that one's pretty interesting. And yeah, that's about it. We're kind of checking out, but it is uh, once again pretty quiet day here at the Rio to start things off. But uh, the players should be coming out on break here within the next few minutes. Um, I think they started, uh, actually I can see the clock from here. Uh, so they've still got 19 minutes before we uh, get to see these players come out. And let's see, uh, <laughs> Casino Examiner uh, using using a quote here, that'd be SOP might have shot its load with a millionaire maker and monster stack. I, I don't think that that's really anything to do with yeah, you know, the turnout for the main event today. But certainly, I mean, day 1A is just slow. It's just how it is. It's a slow day here at the World Series. And uh, these players are experiencing that. You know, like I said, I, I'm actually looking into the Brasilia right now and seeing a lot of tables that are, you know, five-handed, six-handed. That makes it tough. I mean, that's, you know, and that that's definitely... You know, some a, a disadvantage having to play more blind. You know, having to play more rotations and you know blinds going around more often, and a more aggressive style of play. So these guys, uh, you know, pretty tough. And uh, by the way, I see somebody tagged at WSOP sixty five. I think you can just say the main event. <laughs> just me. Uh, let's go back and take a look at some of the other tournaments going on and we'll also be able to you know probably be a good day to review what uh, what has transpired here at this world series so far it has been an amazing wsop in so many ways well, let's take a look at the of course the little one for one drop underway and Let's see what we've got on that. Uh, right now, 90 players remaining. And we do have some eliminations there. And uh, it looks like James Woods was in the one drop. My bad. So lost him. Uh, but uh, you know, pretty... Uh, let me get some chip counts on that for you. Yeah, you know, I do apologize. Just a slow day and... You know, Joe's uh, kind of tied up here. Uh, Charbel Ozzy, still your leader. 514, Julia, Julian Parman is at 471. Uh, Matthew Laposse at 458. Robert McLaughlin, 425. Natalie Kavyazin at 415. So um, not a whole lot of movement in terms of the chip counts right now. In event number 62. Uh, event number 63. That one is over. Event 64. Let's take a look at that Pot Limit Omaha tournament. Um, I believe that one may just be getting underway too at, at 2 o'clock. I think that's about where it is. So Marco Newman leading that one. Isaac Barron uh, just a little bit behind Newman at 1.44 million. Isaac Barron 1.26. Uh, Pat Walsh at 1.1. 1.17. Uh, David Williams coming into that in sixth place. So that, that one just should be getting underway here very shortly. All right. And, yeah, that's that's about where it is. Um, and, by the way, I want to make sure to mention here real fast that, of course, uh, of course, on a very slow day like this, this is the third anniversary of me doing the show. Been three years. Of course, started off with Jerry Yang, Olivier Bousquet, and some other guests, and got things rolling way back in the days of short stacked radio, and uh, moved on up through as uh, Fifth Street Radio, and now the Mark Hoke Show, and uh, celebrating three years today, and doing it here at the main event of the World Series of Poker. I wouldn't have bet that was going to happen. All right, um, let's see. So about 14 minutes left on the break. That should be definitely enough time to get this in. So let's take a, uh, yeah, thank you, Wookie. Uh, let's take a look back on what has gone on here at the World Series of Poker so far this year. 
as, of course, a couple bracelet events remaining, but we can hit most of these bracelet winners. Uh, your Event 1 Casino Employees No Limit Hold'em event goes to Roland Raparejo, uh, knocks off Corey Emery to win the Employees event. So big congratulations there, as, of course, uh, Chad Holloway could not defend his title. But that's how it goes. Got things right on a roll with the 25K Mix Max No Limit event as Vanessa Selps knocks off Jason Moe in a heads-up match. And that one was uh, you know, a little bit of trash talking going on there between Moe and Selps. Uh, but Vanessa Selps let her card play and do the talking. She wins $871,148 for her efforts in event number two. Uh, event number three, that was a Pot Limit Omaha event. And that was, of course, won by Brandon Shaq Harris, who has been tearing up the World Series this year as he knocks off Morgan Popham to win that one. Uh, Yori Yogo in third, Steve Bularakis in fourth, Matthew Ryan in fifth. Uh, Greg Merson made the mistake wearing the Toronto Blue Jays jersey in that one, finishing 14th. So that was event number three, Pot Limit Omaha. We go to... Uh, now event number five, Mr. Computer, thank you. Event number four, No Limit Hold'em on this one. 1K buy-in, the first 1K of this World Series. Won by Kyle Cartwright, pricking up his first World Series of Poker Bracelet. Defeats Jason Pasker, who we'll be hearing about here a little bit later on in the series. Uh, Lon Schwartz uh, looked like he had a pretty good shot to win that, but it is Kyle Cartwright taking that one down. Schwartz finishing in third place, and our good friend Jeff Gross in 13th. So that is event number four, 1K, no limit hold'em. Event number five, the limit deuce to seven triple draw low ball event. And that one goes to Tuan Lee. Tuan Lee wins his first World Series of Poker Bracelet. And you're going to be hearing uh, that trend quite a bit through these WSOP results as he knocks off Justin Bonomo. So Bonomo comes up one spot short, but uh, we'll see uh, later on Justin Bonomo did get his revenge at the World Series of Poker final table. Elliot Lesser in third, Nick Shulman in fourth, George Danzer fifth, Phil Galfon in sixth, uh, Sergey Rabchenko in seventh, Alex Deneau in eighth, and Jason Mercier in ninth place. So that is event number five, the 10K limit deuce to seven triple draw low ball event. Go to event number six. That's the $1,500 No Limit Hold'em shootout. And Alex Bolotin uh, beats Dimitar Donchev. Donchev, of course, a former PCA main event champion, uh, beats John Lane and Josh Ari. Of course, the big hand of that tournament was between Ari and Bolotin, uh, where Ari had flopped a set of 10s, but Bolotin turns a set of aces and ends up crippling Josh Ari and sends him, ends up getting sent to the rail in fourth. But it's been a great World Series for Josh Arie as well. But Alex Bulletin wins his first World Series of Poker Bracelet. And, of course, we go to event number seven. And this one, of course, had the world watching. Not quite as much as uh, a couple of nights later. But seven-card Raz won by Ted Forrest as he defeats Phil Helmuth. Heads up Greg Bach, or Greg Pappas in third. David Bach in fourth. Brock Parker in fifth. Another name you'll hear soon. Brandon Cantu finishes in sixth place in that one. Huxseed in 12th. Now event number seven, your seven card Raz. Event number eight, uh, the millionaire maker. Jonathan Dimmig is the recipient of a, a unbelievable blow up by Stephen Greener. Uh, Dimmig taking that down over Jeffrey Coburn. James Duke in third, Andrew Tang in fourth, Brian, Bradley Anderson in fifth place. Grainer came in with an 8 million chip lead into the final table and comes up short and only walks away with 273,000. Dimming out of Van Purse, New York, goes with one, gets $1,319,587. That will buy you a lot of ruffles and stress balls. We'll talk about that in a little bit, too. Um, or maybe we'll save it for tonight. We'll see. Uh, but that is event number eight, the Millionaire Maker, 7,977 entries for that tournament. you got to wonder if which which one they like better here at the World Series. 
the uh, Monster Stack or the Millionaire Maker. Event 9, $1,000 buy-in. Jeffrey Smith takes that one down. He beats uh, Nyahep Nguyen, followed by Frank Patty, Joe Fontana, Chris Halgo, Big Hooney, Brad Lisbon, Dave Inselberg in eighth place in that one. So Jeffrey Smith wins event number nine, the No Limit Hold'em event. Uh, event number 10, Limit Omaha High Low, split eight or better. 10K buy-in goes to Brock Parker. So Brock Parker, after making a final table, comes up and wins his first World Series poker, or his third World Series poker bracelet, excuse me. So Parker uh, taking a 443000 on that one, knocks off Rich Ashby. Uh, two, uh, winning 274000 Ophir Moore finishing third. Shirley Rosario in fourth. Vyacheslav Ortinsky finishes fifth. And Melissa Burr made one of her three final tables in this event as well. All right, we'll go to event number 11. No Limit Hold'em six-handed event. Um, as the players in Brasilia and the rest of the World Series Main event are looks like they're down to eight minutes and twenty seven seconds on the break, so we'll be seeing them soon. And Justin Bonomo comes out to win that one, knocks off Mike Sowers, Daniel Strelitz in third, Lance Harris in fourth. Uh, let's see. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me, guys. I had a lot of sleep last night. I'll tell that story later on. Um, Taylor Parr finished sixth. Uh, Todd Anderson in ninth. And those are your notables. There in event number 11, the No Limit Home six-hand event won by Justin Bonomo. So at this point in the World Series, we already had about three or four guys. I think it was four guys winning their first bracelet and many of them chasing for a long time. That trend continued. Gregory Colo winning the $1,500 Pot Limit Hold'em event. Uh, notables on that one, Phil Collins in ninth. And that was really about it. So uh, not a really experience field there playing down to the end in event number 12. Event number 13, no limit, deuce to seven, draw, triple, draw, or deuce seven, draw, low ball. And this one, of course, blew everyone out of water. 10K buy-in on that. And Paul Volpe wins his first World Series of Poker bracelet. And Volpe did it in spectacular fashion as he dumps some of the greatest names in the game at this final table. He had to deal with, uh, and just, just looking at the last last 10 here, Ashton Griffin, Darren Elias, Rep Porter, Abe Masseri, John Manette, Larry Wright, and then had to get through a Final Four, Brian Rast, Jason Mercier, and Daniel Negreanu to capture that no limit, deuce to seven, draw low ball, 10K bracelet. So big congratulations to a good friend of ours, Paul Volpe, as he... <laughs> beats Negrano and Mercier, and that was the night the inter went out. Internet went out. Daniel, Daniel broke the internet that evening. Good for him. Uh, limit event fourteen. Limit high low, Omaha high low split eight or better. Goes to Nick Cost as he beats Cal Rachura, James Bucci, Kayla McNeil, who won this event last year, uh, comes in fourth. Alex Leno, another nice finish for him, finishing fifth. Uh, Greg Raymer in 7th, and Konstantin Puchkov finishing in ninth place. That is event number 14, No Limit, or sorry, Limit Omaha High Low Split 8 or better. Nolan Holmes, six-handed event, uh, was event number 15. And giving that one a rundown for you. Won by Davidi Katai. He picks up his third World Series of Poker bracelet. Wins $508,000. Gordon Vio in second. Tony Roberto in third. Mark Darner fourth. Followed by John Andres, Zachary Korik, Heinz Kamutsky, and Phil Helmuth. Coming up just short of bracelet number 14 again. Uh, let's take a look at event number 16. That was the Limit Deuce to Seven Triple Draw Low Ball event. $1,500 buy-in. And that is one by Todd Bui. Uh, Todd Bui takes that one down to over Captain Tom Franklin. Oh, interesting. Uh, just looking up here real quick and seeing a bunch of players getting moved in the Amazon or the uh, Brasilia room. Um, but anyway, uh, back to that one. Ismail Bojang, uh, eighth place, another great finish for him. Mike Lee in 11th. A pretty good one there in the limit. A deuce to seven, triple draw, low ball event. 
Oh, excuse me. I apologize. Gosh darn it. Uh, seniors event. And let's back this up the correct way. Uh, the seniors event, of course, won by Dan Highmiller. So, uh, Kenneth Lynn, no longer your champion. Dan Highmiller will wear the crown, and he knocks off. Golly gee whiz. Uh, Donald Moss in second, David Smith in third, Anthony Wise in fourth, Dennis Phillips finishing fifth, and David Tran finishing sixth. So a pretty entertaining seniors event championship. As he doesn't quite do it. All right, and let's go to event number 18, the seven-card Raz. As we're down to about three minutes and 45 seconds of the first break here at the World Series of Poker. And seven card Raz, 10K buy in goes to George Danzer. Danzer knocks off Brandon Shaq Harris. Shaq Harris was trying to win his second bracelet of this World Series, but falls one spot short. George Danzer winning a World Series of Poker bracelet here as he takes that down. Uh, Todd Barlow in third, Yuval Bronstein in fourth, Brian Hastings in fifth, uh, David Bach eighth, Dan O'Brien in ninth place in the 10k seven card raz event uh event number 19 no limit hold'em tournament uh that one was a 1500 dollars buy-in and that one gets shipped to ted gillis the former the ex-marine one of the few amateurs to break through and get this done he even upsets john hennigan boy i'll tell you what had uh, hennigan won that heads up match Boy, he'd be enemy of a chasing player of the year on this one for sure. Uh, Dejan Div uh, Divkovic finishing third out of Bosnia. Um, and that was, uh, honestly, those were your notables that were left. And that one is, it looked like a free road for Hennigan. But Ted Gillis stands in the way. Uh, event number 20. And no Limit Hold'em shootout on that one. And that goes to Corey Kilpatrick. So Kilpatrick. First bracelet and knocks off Eric Wasserson, Noah Bronstein, uh, Jack Duong, Chris Bell, Phil Galfon, Taylor Parr, Mike Stonehill. Pretty good group there. And Dylan Lind as well. Pretty good group there in event number 20. Uh, that one goes to Corey Kilpatrick. Uh, we slide down and, of course, uh, still a long way to go on this. We're just waiting for these guys to head on on their break here, see who, if we can get anybody to say hi. Uh, 154 left on the clock. Uh, Dominic Nitschke winning, leads the Germans, who, of course, are leading the way here, aside from the United States, in World Series of Poker bracelets. Uh, 1K buy-in, Dominic Nitschke is your winner, defeats Dave Alessandro. Bob Bonaro, of course, final tableist from a couple of years ago in the main event, uh, finishing third. Zach Grunberg, who has had a, a pretty darn good World Series for himself, Finishing fourth. Uh, Jeff Gross was in sixth on that one. That was your notables there. Event number 22. We'll keep kind of shuffling down. We had a horse tournament going on there. Da -da. All right. Looks like uh, Jack is uh, making. The, sounds like Jack is making the call for the break here. Okay. And, of course, uh, the 10K horse run by Chris Fox Wallace. Wallace won a half a million dollars on that one. Knocks off Randy Ole, who makes another final table. Comes up short on that one. Richard Sklar in third. Richard Ashby in fourth. Max Pescatori in fifth. Uh, Bill Chen would be one of many final tables for him at this World Series. Finishing seventh, Calvin Anderson finishing eighth. We'll hear that name later as well. i got to tell you, you know, I'm looking in the, uh, the Brazilian right now. And a lot of empty tables. They did some consolidating in there. And, uh, you know, we're... Well, I'm, I'm looking at the whole bronze section over here. And there's a, there's not a lot of players in there. This is gonna tur could turn out to be a really slow day for the main event, to say the least. Of course, you know, we'll see some late reg, but still. All right. And they are called finish the, finish the hand you're on and get out of here. So here they come as these guys are getting ready to get their break in. First one of the the main event as the level one is complete 
here on day 1A. And these guys starting to fill her out of here. And, you know, normally it's pretty loud, but I, I don't know. <laughs> of course, a lot of people holding their, holding their cell phones and you know, texting everybody where they're at, what's going on. But I gotta say, this is this is a pretty unusual sounding first break here at the WSOP because, as I said, normally it's a, a pretty pretty hectic time out here. But for some reason today, just uh, nothing too exciting. And I, I'm you know I'm not trying to to beat a dead horse here, but you know unfortunately that's the situation. It is quiet. I mean, you guys know what these breaks are usually like, and it's just it's just nothing like that right now. Oh, look who's here. I wonder if we can get this pepped up. This would be nice. That's Marco. No, he's, and Marco is talking to a cute girl, so I am out on that one. But, wow, I mean, like I said, this is, um, this is unusually quiet for, you know, this section of the building here at the World Series. This is main event. Uh, you know, off to a little bit of a slow start. Normally, get the bathroom fight. Everybody trying to maybe grab a snack or something like that over here at the poker kitchen. But uh, there they go. Oh, we may get a guest though. If he doesn't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> All right, then uh, Joe is going to the bathroom. Well, that's kind of what we'd expect out of Joe. <laughs> from what i've heard he's got the prostate the size of a grapefruit no i'm kidding just having fun but uh, joe Payne out there we got kenny Einiger hanging around but man it is just uh stunningly quiet here at the wsop so kenny Einiger looking good in that yellow shirt it's you betcha Miami John Cernuda is here. Hi, John. How are you? Doing good. Yes, there you go. There you go. There's a chip report for Miami John. He is up 1,000 chips. So 31,000 for Miami John Cernuto. So there we get a little bit of a nice report on that. I would imagine we'll probably hear from Joe when he gets, uh, gets done in the restroom. Be stunned if we didn't. And now we're starting to see a few people. Uh, I guess the Amazon room may have just gotten dismissed. The pavilion. So uh, players out here on the break. And, of course, we're on the Mark Hoke Show. I'm your host, Mark Hoke. Slower day here at the WSOP as we kick off the main event. I'm just kind of waiting to see if Joe's going to come out here in a little bit. You know, of course, uh, we are breaking down the World Series of Poker as all these events have gone on, a couple left to go before everything is cleared off the docket except for the main event. Well, let's see if we've got any updates here from the main event so far. So hang in there with us. And like I said, I think uh, hopefully we'll grab somebody over here to say hi for a couple of minutes. But I want to give Joe a shot. As he comes out there. Um, let's see. Just looking at the. It's like Kent Wootrick hits a set. And he has got himself on the board here at 55,300. Always key to get that double. If you can get that double up on the early in the first day, that is huge to advance to day two. So a nice one there. Uh, some other updates, Johnny Chan, 37-5. Uh, Tom McAway, 27-6. Barney Boatman, 26-6. Uh, Christopher George, 48-3. or 48-3. Kerry Katz, 37-7. Uh, Tom Middleton gets some chips back to 2,300. Uh, Jay Farber, of course, uh, we knew he was here. We would reported that a while ago. Poker News finally found him. He's at 35-5.
Of course, uh, we're just talking to Jay at the beginning, and uh, Jay said, you know, I just want to move up one spot. That's all. Just give me one. Don't blame him. Uh, looks like Nick Devella. Wow. And uh, Mike Mattiso, uh, a little bit fired up in there. Uh, apparently, Mike limped in from middle position, completed by the small blind. Uh, action on Nick Devella in the big blind raises 350. Mattiso calls with a 376. And look who's here. You know, I, I normally I talk about the, the story of the amateurs getting their first main event, but we'll talk about the semi-pro blackjack superstar Joe Payne here. First first main first main event for me. God what what was better? The first time you had sex or the first time you sat down and got a hand in here? In retrospect, let's uh, you know, let's get it right. It's pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty close. It's kind of uh took down my first pot really early it was up when I jumped up to 32,200 and I pretty much been caught that I, I made two raises um, one right before the break on the button with uh, seven ten of spades I've been projecting a really really tight image so I thought I could steal there and I got the small blind full the big blind re popped me I threw it away and he turned over pocket king so ah, there you go and then uh, one other time I, I raised uh, I got a really aggressive, not a really aggressive, I have an aggressive player to my right, a somewhat aggressive player. I'm in seat six. Uh, seat seven, ag an aggressive player. And seat nine, a super aggressive player. I mean, this kid is, he's played the first five pots for raises and re-raises, and um, his chip stack is going up and down, so he's uh, he's splashing around a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, so I raised it one other time with ace jack of clubs, and a young lady in seat four has been pretty tight. re popped me back to 1100, and I, I threw it away. Didn't want to get involved this early with Ace Jack. It's the, yeah. We call that the parking lot hand. So. Yes, it is a parking <laughs> lot hand. You are correct, sir. Uh, so well, that, that's exciting. I, you know, well, what is it, you know, for everybody out there, even though, you know, that wants to try and play their first main event, uh, you know, what is it like to finally make it in there and, and get to play this thing. I mean, seriously. Oh, let's put it this way. I could not go to sleep last night. I tossed and turned. I was up. I was back down in bed. I was up. I just really, ex really excited about playing today. And I was actually didn't get much sleep last night. And I was actually considering changing my starting day. Wow. But yeah, because I just maybe I got maybe three hours worth of sleep. Join the club. I was with you. What was going on I with us know. last night? I don't know. Uh, I tried to go to bed early last night. I was in bed at. 10 o'clock which is really early for me i slept for about an hour and a half and got up and then i was up and down all night so but i decided to gut it out and figure you know what if i'm a little bit tired i'll probably be more focused and not be as spontaneous and and i actually think it'll help my game being a little on a tired side there you go yeah so we'll see what happens so now one thing that we uh, got some reports on where the tables are starting very short short in there uh kind of got to be a little frustrating uh, playing five six handed in there we so i was playing we started with seven at my table and we just picked up a player halfway about halfway in about an hour in we picked up so we're eight handed um you know but what blair said the other day made me think about that too is that do i really want a table of nine or ten uh, which he which he projected would be um and i got a couple of a couple of loose gooses at my table so yeah. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I, I think starting off the main event, I think I'd much rather be ten handed and play, yeah, absolutely, and play I mean, deep. You know, play yeah. But we did play get a, slow, play deep. We did get a report of uh, players that were forced to play heads up, and they're not supposed to be doing that. No, really, really. They had two players at the table, and they played. Wow, stunning, How, isn't that? That's, and were there other stacks that were being blinded off at the same? I guess there were a couple of stacks, but nobody, nobody at the wow. table. So uh, yes. if if you if if you the two players know what they're doing, they'll just p take a chance a piece and steal in the blinds and just building up a stack and not getting involved. That would kind of make sense. That would but, make real sense to me. Yeah, but they actually hooked up in a hand. So oh, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. You kind of give the guy the wink and like, all right, let's steal all these dead stacks that are hanging around here. Well, another interesting thing happening here uh, that we heard about, and I don't know if you have been following the updates or not, but uh, but. Can but Kenny Einiger is uh, busted out. No, he's not. No, he Kenny's got like out. almost uh, forty-eight thousand in chips. Oh, good for him. Yeah, 
Uh, but the featured table right off the bat ends up with Greg Merson and Ryan Reese. No. On the featured table. Wow. Along with Bill Two Perkins. Two former. And then they move John Manette in there, too. But uh, kind of odd. That that's, you, don't, you don't think that's random, do you? Kind of odd that the two world that's champions random. end up at the same table. I'm going to say there was a little shenanigans going on there. That's got to be frustrating for those guys. I mean, you know, you're playing shorthanded, and you got the last two world champions playing. Uh, you know, I mean, if I'm, if I'm Ryan Reese or Greg Merson, I'm not happy about that. There's Chris Moneymaker. Hey, you want to say hi to everybody here too, real quick? Let me jump out of here. Yeah, we'll get. All right, we got to we got to get the champ on board here. How we doing, Mark? Let's let's say hi to Chris Moneymaker, everybody. What's up? No, not much. Just showed up. Decided to play a little poker today. I I woke up at twelve fifteen and uh, realized I was a little bit late and decided I was going back to bed. Well, why would you Why would you want to play this tournament? Eh, it's, <laughs> it's, people say it's a pretty good size one. That's all I've heard. Yeah, it's it's all right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people here. I mean, you know, I've been in this over room over here, though. It doesn't look like it's that big a field. So, you know, I think we're supposed to move into the other room where they have a few more people, supposedly. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a little quiet over there. Uh, yep. well, let me get your reaction to what happened here early on. I don't know if you heard this or not, but Ryan Reese and Greg Merson ended up on the featured table right off the bat to start this tournament off. And, of course, you know, you've probably been in that situation where you've gotten thrown on the featured table right away, too. But what kind of pressure is that to get put in there with – the current champ and the previous champ on the same table it's kind of crazy isn't it well yeah it's, it's obviously you know doesn't seem like a random draw i mean it's, it's <laughs> awful funny how they when someone goes bust it's um someone that comes up that people know a lot of times so uh but um you know it's obviously it's not fortunate to get that draw but again it's day one i mean you know your goal on day one is obviously to accumulate some chips but really it's more about just getting through the day and not doing anything to hurt yourself too bad I mean, day two and day three is more about accumulating chips. I would rather have the, the weaker fields on day two and day three than uh, day one, to be honest. I mean, I don't mind tough players on my table on day one as long as they're not all tough players. Right. Um, because, again, you know, it's good players slash bad players. I mean, you're not going to accumulate a ton of chips unless people are just making obvious mistakes. Um, except for maybe later in the day. I mean, the first, you know, that's why I didn't show up for the first two levels. I mean, I don't expect to bust anybody in the first two levels, and you know, don't let, I'm my own worst enemy sometimes. So I just want to bust <laughs> myself. You still get goosebumps coming in here? Uh, I wouldn't call it goosebumps. Um, there's obviously an air of excitement, but there's an air of excitement at almost any tournament I play. I, I still enjoy the game. So um, I'll be honest, when I play a, a event that's a multi-day event, all day one's usually uh, pretty boring and. I'm not really looking forward to it, but goosebumps start like day three or day four. That's when you get excited. Once you get into the money and the game sort of changes, that's when goosebumps start, and that's when the pressure starts, and that's when I enjoy it. Um, you know, right now, I mean, we're not playing for anything yet. Yeah. I mean, you know, I could play my A game all day and bust out, or I could have tons of chips, and it's completely irrelevant to how much money I'm going to make today. So, again... It's really not that exciting. And also the game plays a little bit slower today. There's, you know, it's a much slower pace. There's not as much three betting, not, not as many big pots. Um, you know, I guess obviously it depends on your table, but like I don't mind three bet. I don't think I'll three bet today at all. I mean, it's just, it, usually it's not part of my day one strategy to three bet uh, in weaker fields or even against the stronger players. I mean, I really don't want to bloat pots. Um, because you have so many chips, even if you blow a pot, you can't blow it enough to, even with aces or something like that, to really maximize your hand. I mean, I'd rather play post flop and make good decisions, and just hope there are people at my table that are gonna, you know, overvalue their hands or pay too much for their draws. I mean, that's really what you're looking for on day one is someone to not be able to fold top pair or fold an over pair or to just pay, like I said, pay too much for their draws and hopefully they miss. Um, I mean, that's really a essentially what you're looking for on day one. I mean, you know, you're looking not to shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. It's one of those things where you can't win the tournament, but you sure as hell lose it. Yeah, there's a lot of people go bulk on day one, and, you know, I've done it before. Uh, I've done it twice, actually, and it's never a fun day when you go bulk broke on day one. Um, but you got to play the hands that are dealt, and you got to play them how you think you're supposed to play them. I mean, I'm not unhappy with the, the two years that I did bust on day one. I'm not, I mean, I busted on, like, the second level one year. Wow. And... Um, I got a really big hand, and I played it really fast. And I'm not upset with the way I played it, but 
you know, in retrospect, given the field and uh, the fact that, you know, I really felt like I had an edge over the average player in the field, uh, I definitely could have played it a little bit slower and conserved some chips, even though, you know, given the hand and given the situation, I had tons of outs and I had tons of equity in the hand. Um, it's still, given this event, probably, you know, if it was a PCA or something with a just a super – strong field I would have probably made the same play yeah um and you know I try not to treat this event any differently than any of those events but you know at the end of the day you sort of have to just yeah. I mean anybody that plays poker knows that this field's going to be a little bit softer than your average 10k field that's just the fact of the matter there's a lot of satellite winners there's a lot of people that this is their bucket list event to play yeah. and uh you know it's great for that I, I think it's a, an amazing tournament uh because you have all these people aspiring to play and that, you know, won their way through their home game. I got a buddy that won a little country club game and they all put their money in and sent the, the champion out to come play in this event. And I'm sure across the country there are many other leagues that do the same type of thing. So uh, it's really one of the few events and maybe the only event in the world that does that. So yeah, really you, cool thing. You, were, you were one of those guys too. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Welcome, welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah, they, we, they, people randomly now, come up and ask you now, questions while you're on the radio. Yes, now, cool. now I got to say that's the first time that I've ever had a world champion be interrupted by a direction question here at the World yeah, Series. That, she asks, "How that, do I get back to the main hotel?" <laughs> <sighs> and there's literally there's like probably in, as we're sitting here, a hundred people just stand, milling around. But she comes and asks us with yes. the microphones on. Yeah, absolutely. That's different. Maybe you get that all the time. I don't know. I I've do, never... and it's painful. It really is. <laughs> well, Chris, we're going back in there. Yeah. I wish you the best luck, man. I'd love to see Thanks, you at that final table this year. Appreciate Let's it. get you back in there, Yeah, that'll be fun. All right. All right, here you go. Chris Moneymaker, everybody. Stopping by. Good luck, Joe. Go get him. All right, so I want to thank Chris Moneymaker for stopping by. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That is unreal. We have a world champion and one of the most influential figures in poker ever, and someone comes up and asks us how to get to the casino. Oh, God. <laughs> a class, Another classic moment here on the Mark Oak Show. You've got to love it. Uh, let's see. Uh, chat box firing going in there. Let's see. Uh, former WSOP TD Matt Savage seeking or uh, serving revenge with the Ari attorney current to the main event. Uh-huh. Yeah. I hear you. Wookieway saying, and Johnny Chan. Uh, Wookieway, Mark has no respect for second in bracelets behind Poker Brat. Oh, sure I do. Are you kidding me? Of course I do. Uh, and uh, Wookieway saying, nice guy to Chris Moneymaker. Well, yeah. Well, There's quite a few other uh, players that I have a lot of respect for. We'll talk about one of those a little bit later on. But everybody's headed back in. Uh, about one minute and 28 seconds left on the break here. First break here at the World Series of Poker. Main event, day 1A. But uh, <laughs> I can't believe that. That is hilarious. All right, so I'll tell you what, everybody's headed back in. So let's take a break, and we'll come back. And, uh, now of course, so we've got more World Series recap. Uh, we'll maybe uh, get to that a little later on tonight. Of course, so we'll be back on here at 6.30 p.m. to 8.00. I have a little more news, excitement, see who's coming in here uh, late, Regin, and so on for day 1A. So stick around, everybody. We will be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show. Thanks for joining us here. We're live at the World Series of Poker, the main event underway. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. 
Plus, enter the discount code Mark Hoke Show when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final nine, comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with the promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. .net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high-quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the tables to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's D-E-E-G Poker.com. Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. Sports bettors, tired of getting beat every week at your sports book? It's time to stop guessing and start winning. We all know cash is king, and it's time to let the team at Double Digit Covers come to the rescue to help you get the positive cash flow you need to live the life you've always dreamed about. Tony Dose and his all-star sports handicapping team will be in your corner to help you beat the point spread, bring excitement and winning to your betting experience, and build your bankroll to levels you never thought possible. Get free winning sports information at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Stop guessing and start winning today at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Call now for today's free winner. 1-855-489-2700. That's 1-855-489-2700. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. 
Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. Do I look like I have tour guide stamped on my forehead? You've got to be kidding me. Uh, that is a, that, that, that's a face palm. Folks, does everybody here at the World Series, just for a second. If you want directions, ask somebody else than the people with the microphones. God, got to be kidding me. Chris Moneymaker, one of the most influential poker figures in history. Interrupted by someone needing to know where the casino is. It's a new record. That is a new, that is a new level of stupidity. So thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, looking over here, by the way, in the Brasilia room right now, um, bronze or silver section here just about cleaned out. Um, you now they have usually have about four different colored sections in here. And it really looks to me like they've only got one row one row and maybe a little bit uh, another table sticking out over there uh, filled up so we've got a lot going on there hey what's up i'm doing very well thank you all right so so a little bit uh, light day so far here at the world series like i said just uh you know very quiet action not a lot happening um of course but the main event going on so it's kind of the, the twist of fate there. By the way, I had Nolan Dalla walking by. Maybe Nolan will stop over and say hello. We'll see. But uh, just a, a little bit of a surreal scene here uh, at the uh, at the main event. Just you know, just really quiet. Um, and once again, hey, I want to thank everybody uh, real quick. Uh, the third anniversary of uh, me doing the shows, uh, of course, in uh, whatever... Uh, whatever you know, the incarnations we've had it, but three years for me today, and boy, is that a bitter irony <laughs> to uh, have that happen. Unreal. Um, uh, just some other tweets coming in here. Wow, a uh, pretty whack of uh, playing Hollywood poker to cancel a quote unquote guaranteed tourney last night because they couldn't meet it. Oh my goodness! I hope that didn't happen. That would not be a good thing. Can't shut down a guaranteed tournament. Not coming from uh, Jonathan Zahn over there. Um, yeah, a little bit of action in the hallways. All right, and just like I said, just taking a look here. Uh, Kevin Mathers uh, giving a little bit of an update. Uh, level 2 of the main event now underway. Uh, 800 entries into the 1 p.m. 1K Mega with 40 minutes left to register. So, so like at least they got a they got a good turnout for the 1K Mega Satellite. Uh, of course, uh, Leonard Lang, our good buddy, is going to be playing in one of those. So that, that should be pretty cool. I want to wish him the best of luck because he won our drawing. And just trying to see if we have any more updates from any players. So let me uh, let's just go in here to the uh, tournament updates. We'll get that uh, refreshed and take a look see here for you. Uh, right now, of course, uh, we did have the bracelet ceremony for Salman Jotty, who is borrowing my bracelet until next year. Um, let's see. Running down, that's yeah, yep. And of course, we just talked. You know, of course, we just interviewed Chris Moneymaker, who just joined into the tournament. And uh, yeah, that's all the updates we have right now. So, like I said, light day here at the World Series of Poker. But uh, of course, bringing you the best in coverage, no question about it. We're not playing Club WPT or cutting people's cords. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing and covering the World Series of Poker. No comment. Um, let's see. Wookie Way 
Wookie Way in the chat box, by the way, thrown out there, uh, canceled a couple days ago. That, that was you tweeted and posted that. Uh, but second time or third time this summer, they've done this. Yeah, you can't do that stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you, you cancel a couple guaranteed tournaments because you don't meet the guarantee, or it looks like you're not going to meet it, you're not going to get very far. I mean, that, that is going to kill your poker room in a hurry. So that's a that's a pretty bad decision on playing Hollywood's part if that uh, that is true. So pretty tough stuff there, and the greatest masseuse of all time walking down the hallway. By the way, I I I just it's I haven't seen this person for a couple of days and it just breaks my heart. Yeah, you know, we we should talk about how important it is to be a masseuse on the air. We're it's that quiet in here. Hi Heather. It is quiet. Hey, here, sit down. No, oh, you get in trouble. Oh, I know. Okay. Okay, fine. All good. So Heather, Heather's standing by here. She's kind of sneaking in the camera. She's just, Now she's sauntering in a little bit. She saved me during Event 60, by the way. I got I got to throw this out here because I was getting drowsy during Event 60, and she came in and just beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing, but thank you. Yeah, there you are. Here, I'll, I'm going to sneak the microphone. Gotta so, go uh, you're going to run away? You got to work, too. I am working. To work, I've been working. I'm I'm good. Stop back. I could uh, I could use a rub down. Okay. There you go. Honest to God, that was a great story because I you know I forgot to mention that that she uh <laughs> I was so tired. I, I don't know what it was. I didn't get a lot of sleep and came out and just was getting drowsy and I was like <laughs> I texted her and said Heather I need I need something here. Not that. But I needed some help and because I was exhausted and starting to nod off at the table. And uh, she came over and gave me, I'm like, can't help. And she's like, yeah. And I got the massage of my life on that one. So uh, Wookie was way, um, saying, why is Katie Dozier not in the main event? That was a possibility. She and uh, Katie Stone had all said that they uh, both said they might be skipping the main event. So I'm uh, not sure what's going on there with that. But uh, hopefully they'll make a decision to maybe come back. Of course, still plenty of time to get ready for the main, so uh, we'll see. All right, so once again, players uh, back in on break here at uh, for the World Series, so uh, level two underway on day 1A. And of course, uh, day 1B and day 1C next couple of days as well. Uh, players from 1A and 1B will then go into the flight for day 2A, and then 1C goes to 2B. It was, of course, on day 1C, uh, these guys, uh, you know, much huge, bigger turnout because of it being obviously the, you know, the closest day to the rest of the tournament. You know, the 1A, certainly, uh, you know, one of those days where, you know, you're going to get, once you finish this one up, you're going to get, you're going to get two days off before you play again. So there's a long way to go on this one. Let's see, Wookie. Uh, <laughs> Wookie Way saying just call me Wookie. Okay, fine. Whatever. Whatever works for you, big man. It's all good. Uh, but of course, so we are getting ready to wrap up our afternoon show here at the World Series of Poker. Don't forget, we have we just got just got a new podcast up on uh Podbean today with six great guests. If you missed that, didn't get to see that post, uh we've got Ben let me pull that list up for you because that is a it's an outstanding group of players that we were fortunate enough to put in on that podcast and I will pop that off for you here real quick and here it is um, let's just keep sliding down we'll find it uh, we've got uh, Tommy Hang who won his first World Series poker bracelet joined that list uh, Robert Mizraki who won the dealer's choice event Ben Yu has had a bunch of final tables here at the World Series John Hennigan the PP See champion this year taking home the Chip Reese Trophy. Tyler Patterson, who won his bracelet. And then we had Wicked Chops just kind of go off the beaten path on that one. All on that podcast today, MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com, also on iTunes, available as well. So some pretty good stuff there for you to check out. Of course, all our videos are up on YouTube right now. Just put in Mark Hoke and you'll find it. And we had an awesome one on uh, Thursday night where we had an hour and a half interview with uh, Danielle Stryker, author of Poker Samadhi, and the former World Series of Poker main event champion and 
recently inducted member of the Poker Hall of Fame. That, of course, is Tom McAvoy. Just uh, taking a ride down memory lane and, you know, trying to help everybody get better at what they're doing in poker. Uh, so great, uh, great video there, along with quite a few others. So, you know, we're going to be, you know, you can relive all of our great moments here from it'll end up being over about 50 days of shows uh, on YouTube. And, of course, uh, markhokeshow.podbean.com as we put together those highlight videos for you or highlight uh, podcasts for you as well. So make sure you check those out. And we appreciate you following the show at Mark Hoke Show and on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. Pretty good stuff coming around, and uh, you know, we're pretty excited to be here and uh, wrapping up our third World Series here at the Rio as we've hit the main event. And things, of course, things get pretty exciting here in about three to four days, well, about five or six days as we start hitting day three. That's when things really get serious around here and uh, people start dreaming a little bit about becoming the world champion. All right, and we'll see if we've got any more uh, updates from the main event before we wrap it up here, just in case anything happened in the last couple of minutes, uh, just 15 minutes into level two. A uh, few chip counts, John Minnett, 43-1, uh, Johnny Chan, 36-9, McCool Pahuja, 31-8, uh, Merson is a 29-2, and Ed Overstadt, 28-8, Tom McAvoy, 26-8, Antonio Sfondiari, 26-5, uh, Bill Perkins, 25-5, Ryan Reese, 25-5, uh, Trishel Cantonella, 25-125. Uh, Heather Sue Mercer uh, goes, takes a little bit of a hit and falls down to 30,400. So, Early action underway here at the WSOP, and uh, I think that's pretty much going to do it for us right here. So once again, we'll be back on tonight at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. Should be all sorts of interesting news and notes coming at you here from the WSOP. Of course, on the third anniversary of me doing these poker shows, uh, we do appreciate it. And that means we will see you guys later on tonight. So thanks for joining us. We'll catch you at 6.30 p.m here on the Mark Hoke Show. Have a great afternoon. We'll catch you tonight.